They don't call them emergencies anymore. They call them Patronis. I'll be back in time if I have to pull that plane out with my teeth. Oh, a tractor trailer jackknife and flipped over. It's laying on its side like a drunken dinosaur. We're not like those stiffs up in the front office who wear ties and spend all their time stealing passengers from each other. Maintenance, it's like a circus. One of us gets in trouble, he yells, hey, Rube, they all come around. I'll have this mother out of here by midnight. So stop worrying. In that case, the party starts at 12.01. The way you guys keep heading for this bus looks like you got a broad sashed in there. Out! Everybody out! Joe. My neck's out about 14 feet. Sure it'll work? Well, let's put it this way. You promised me a box of cigars if I pull this off, right? Well, what are you standing here for? Go get them. But the sudden decompression at 30,000 feet is something you got to see to believe. He'll get sucked out, won't he? Well, so will anybody sitting next to him. Until that pressure equalizes, everything within 20 feet of him that's not nailed down or strapped in is going to get sucked right out that hole. She won't take much more. Anyway, she's gonna get it. Joe, shut down! Mr. Petroni, don't you hear? We have to shut down! I can't hear a thing. There's so much noise. Hold on, we're going for broke. <laughs> nice going, sweetheart. Well, listen, I just got this crew broke in, so don't go screwing them up with any of your old-fashioned ways of doing things. You know what I mean? <laughs> Whoops. Whoopsie. He dropped his old-fashioned wrench. Well, how much damage was it? Oh, not a great deal. There's just a big hole in it where the pilots usually sit. Well, if you'll excuse me, sir, I think it's one hell of a stupid idea. Well, that's all we've got, Lieutenant. Now, what have you got to help us? Well, there's only one man who's ever done anything like this, uh, a Major John Alexander. He's an air rescue. I could try to contact him. You know how urgent it is. Who is your commanding officer? A guy named Purcell owns a local TV station. He's sending a remote unit out. What the hell does he want to photograph? We don't have any bodies yet. Take it easy, damn it. We're going to need all the good press we can get. Listen, you son of a bitch. Take it easy, Joe. Take it easy, you said. Right? Well, you know, sometimes the public's right to know gives me a huge pain in the ass. Had they made correction? Negative. What's our ETA at rendezvous? A few minutes. They haven't got a few minutes. You're not gonna do it, Al. Who's gonna stop it? I am! You got anybody else up here knows how to fly that bloody plane? That's a big pussycat, Dad. No, it's a tomcat. The Admiral tells me that between the Navy and the Coast Guard, there are 20 planes and six ships out there. The area where they think the plane went down has been covered. Now the search is expanding outward. So far, they've come up with nothing. Phil, if there are survivors, they're going to find them. This way, Mr. Petroni. Don't worry, Phil. We'll get that plane up. And in one piece, get some sleep, and we'll talk tomorrow. Good night to you, too, honey. I've heard a lot about you, Captain, so I knew that terrific perfume wasn't yours. Oh. <laughs> I was a military advisor in Saigon when we first got in the war. Gee, I remember this Eurasian gal. She had these great big blue eyes. They called her the tarantula. Did you ever run into her? No, I don't think so. You'd remember her if you did. Oh, you pilots are such men. They don't call it the cockpit for nothing, honey. That perfume of yours smells awfully familiar. It's a story that back in the 20s, when he was barnstorming, he made a bet that he could put it to this good-looking wing walker. He boffed her out on the wing, a 1,000 feet above El Paso. His ass got so sunburned, he couldn't sit down for a week. <laughs> <laughs> Who is he? That's your boss, sweetheart. Eli Sand, president of Federation Airlines. Oh, Captain. Ma'am. Um, who's driving the plane? It's on automatic pilot, ma'am.
You deserve a rest, Captain. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Paris. What does this perfect lady look like? For you, Porky Pig. <sighs> For 2,000 francs, she'd better have been special. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Are you, are you trying to tell me she was a hooker? As you Americans say, eh? a real pro. You ever come down on your belly, Paul? Sure. In a simulator. That's terrific. Well, that makes two of us. You want to get out of here safely, then sit down! Sit down! If everybody's out of the rear section, we're all out. The roof's collapsing. Everybody off. Quickly, the fuel tanks are crushed, then explode!